All right, so today it is Foundation Friday. This is where I do a new first impression video every single Friday on my channel, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Next week, there's actually not gonna be a Foundation Friday because it's gonna be the 15 days of foundation announcement video where basically I'm talking about what we're doing with Project Beauty Share and the whole series. So next Friday is when you guys will hear everything about 15 days of foundation, which starts April 5th and goes to the 19th. So I tweeted you guys asking which foundations you wanna see in videos coming up. And one of the main ones was the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus Foundation, which is actually an old foundation. It's been around for years now, and when I actually started YouTube, it was kind of a cult favorite foundation, and it's just one of those products I've never gotten around to trying out for some reason. So I was gonna wait and do this in 15 days of foundation, but I was in Sephora, I never actually walk into Sephora, I always order online. This was one of those foundations that I had absolutely zero idea what shade I was gonna be. So I ended up getting two shades in just the sample cup, so I don't have the actual bottle to show you guys, but it is a very basic squeeze to bottle, exactly like the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation. Whenever I do foundation videos, I always purchase the actual foundation, just so we can talk about the packaging and all of that. But since I was there and I don't know what shade I am, I figured I might as well just try out the sample cups. So let's jump into the claims on Sephora's website. This foundation retails for $41 and you get 1.01 ounces of product pretty much one fluid ounce. This comes in 21 shades, so nice shade range. The lightest shade is number 15 Alabaster. It says for porcelain skin with pink undertones. That one didn't sound like it was gonna match me and the lady in Sephora agreed. So I got samples of shade 20 and 25. You guys will see in the demo which one ended up working for me, but 20 says ivory for light skin with beige undertone, undertone, and undertones, there we go. 25 says for light skin with pink undertones. I have seen swatches of shade 15 alabaster and I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't also get a sample of that one so I could swatch it for you guys. But if you Google Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus shade 15, there's tons of swatches that come up. But I'm gonna insert swatches right now of these two shades compared to some of the other foundations that I own. Here's the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus foundation in the shade 20. Next over is it in the shade 25. And by the time I've swatched these, they've already oxidized. Next over is Tarte Rainforest to the Sea in the shade Porcelain. Then we have Pure Cosmetics Bare It All in the shade Porcelain and Dermacol 208. So there's a really brief description, which I appreciate to the point. It says it's a shine controlling, oil-free, water resistant, complete coverage liquid foundation. That literally sounds like everything that I want in my life. I have combination skin, I get pretty oily, so anything that says shine controlling, sign me up, I'm into it. Since I have cystic acne, I also like more high coverage. It says it hides imperfections, evens out skin tones, and mattifies with a non-oily, perfectly powdered finish. It has four out of five stars on Sephora with 6,000 reviews, so that's pretty good. Like I said, this one's been around for a long time. So those are all the claims. Thank you, Makeup Forever, for not rambling on about 5,000 things that aren't unnecessary. If you are new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I'll upload a... Welcome. You should definitely subscribe. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're excited for Foundation Friday. If you wanna see how the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus Foundation applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right place, just keep watching. Not feeling quite like a human being yet. Need more coffee? It looks like a freaking jungle in here right now. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start out with the shade 20 and see how that one goes. I haven't swatched them yet or anything. Come on, girl in Sephora. She didn't hook a sister up very well. So if you've seen any of my more recent foundation videos, I typically use the Jouer Anti-Blemish Matte Primer in every single video. I am completely out of it and I'm trying to find a different primer that I like. So I think while I'm on the hunt for a good new primer, I'm just gonna not use a primer, but I have washed and moisturized my face like normal. I'm gonna go in with a brush on one side of my face. This is the Morphe E31 and then a beauty blender on the other side. I'm just gonna put about a dime size amount on a palette. I don't know why I've never tried this before. Ooh. Good coverage, really good coverage. That was like not even half that amount either. And it's sitting really nice on my skin. It looks satin matte, but it doesn't look heavy at all. And I think the shade match is pretty good. If you look at my neck down here, it might be a tiny, tiny bit darker, but I mean, it definitely works. Lately, I don't know why, but I've been kind of leaning towards more matte foundations. For the most part, they've just been holding up a little bit better on my skin. I feel like the Pure Cosmetics Bare It All Foundation was my like transition into the matte world. I'm curious to see how this applies with a beauty blender because I think it might apply better on my forehead with a beauty blender. I have some dryness going on on my forehead. It's actually not clinging horribly. When I've been putting on foundation the past few days, it has just been completely clinging to the dryness up here. In comparison to that, this one looks pretty good up there, but it is clinging a tiny, tiny bit. For half my face, I still haven't gone through that dime-sized amount I put out, so that's really good because I usually use a shit ton of foundation. Hopefully you guys can't hear my watch right now. Probably can. 
I was wearing a Morphe liquid lipstick yesterday and when I rubbed it off, my lips were stained fuchsia and I have not been able to fully get it off. I've used oil makeup removers three times. I showered, I've scrubbed them with lip scrub. So damn Morphe, what are you putting in there? It's applying totally fine with the beauty blender. Ooh, that just smoothed out the forehead really well. Yeah, the center of my forehead now is looking good. Okay, I'm starting to feel like I've been missing out my entire life. I feel like I got maybe a tiny bit less coverage on this side with the Beauty Blender. Both sides look really good right now. There isn't a huge difference between the Beauty Blender and the brush side. I'm just gonna go over with the Beauty Blender some of my more pigmented spots and acne to see if I can completely cover it up. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is buildable. If you have acne or rosacea or anything, this is covering it on my skin. To give you a coverage comparison, Definitely not quite as full coverage as Marc Jacobs, Remarkable, or Dermacol at all, but pretty dang good coverage. I've been missing this part of my chin lately. For the amount of texture and dryness on my forehead right now, and this being a more matte foundation, it's sitting really nicely on my skin. I'm liking this, you guys. So right now I have no complaints, which is rare. So it is exactly 10.30 right now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna powder my face. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and kind of decide. It feels like it's setting down to kind of a powdery finish, which is nice for blending stuff on top. And since it is a matte foundation, I kind of just wanna see how it holds up throughout the day. If I can avoid using a powder, I typically do. I do have combination skin, so I get a little bit oily on my T-zone. Definitely just wiped off my nose. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup, drink lots of coffee, and I will be right back. All right, so the rest of my makeup is on. It's now 11.10, had some issues with eyeliner. Just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course I used a new eyeliner today that's like the most waterproof thing on the planet. So once it's on, it's on. So we can just ignore the eyeliner situation today, but I'm gonna tell you guys everything that's on the rest of my face in a second. But let's talk about the foundation. I'm gonna call it check-in time 10.30 since that's when I finished up the foundation because I didn't end up setting it with a powder. I love the way my skin looks right now. My only thing right now is that I do think it's oxidized. It's always difficult. Yeah, it's, you can't even tell on camera really, but there is a line right here. When I went into the bathroom, you could especially see it. It kind of oxidized a bit already. So I'm hoping it just stays like this throughout the day and doesn't oxidize more. If it oxidizes more, I'll definitely have to mix in a little bit of the lighter shade with this. Around my nose and my pores, it's looking nice and smooth. Yeah, I'm just feeling it at this point. So on the rest of my face, I use this Beauty Treats face contour palette that I mentioned in the Hula Light bronzer video. I use these two shades right here, this kind of more reddish one and the tan one and just mix them. For blush, I use this one from Daiso. I think by the time this video is going up, you guys will have already seen it, but I did a full face using $1.50 makeup from Daiso. I wanted to test out this blush again to see what I think of it and I'm not super impressed. And then highlight, this was intense. This is the J Cat You Glow Girl Baked Highlighter in 104 Crystal Sand. I absolutely love the Bella Rose shade. This one looks a bit more glittery slash textured to me. I also use this on my lid as eyeshadow. And for the rest of my eyeshadows, I use the Cool Tone Purpley Shades in the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Eyeliner was also from the Daiso video, the LFR Eye Water Resistant. Very, very water resistant, I might add. And then lips is the Sephora Liquid Lipstick in the shade 33. I love these liquid lipsticks. These will definitely be in my March Rays and Rejects. So 10.30 check-in time. I'm gonna set my check-in alarms. The next check-in I do will be a natural lighting, so I will see you guys in a few hours. So it's now 3.45, so everything's been on for a little bit over five hours and it looks good. When I was looking in the bathroom mirror, I like how it looks. It looks really good in natural lighting. The color always looks off for some reason. I was hoping my vlog camera was gonna come today and I checked the mail just now and it wasn't here yet. So one more time on the iPhone, hopefully. And then the vlog camera will be here for check-ins, but it's looking really good on my upper lip. My forehead looks amazing to me. No major creasing around the nose or anything yet. The color does look off for me. Hopefully you guys can tell in this lighting now, but Looking at it compared to my neck, it's definitely oxidized and is too dark. So I think next time if I go a shade down or mix in a bit of the lighter shade, hopefully that'll work by the time it oxidizes. So that's the only thing I'm not liking with it right now. Everything else I'm feeling. It's now 11.30. Just finished watching the Bachelor finale. What the heck? I just want to play with those dogs. 11.30, so the foundation's been on for over 12 hours, 13 hours. I normally don't keep it on this long, but for 13 hours, it looks freaking amazing. Separating a tiny bit right there on my forehead, but I didn't get really any upper lip creasing. Around my nose, it's breaking down a little bit, but I feel like that's expected with any foundation for 13 hours. I've had foundations look 50 times worse than this a few hours in, so I think it's actually held up really well throughout the day considering. The only thing I'm really 
bummed by is the fact that it oxidized so much. I feel like it's not even showing up. Maybe you can see more there. Yeah, there we go. A little bit. It's oxidized a lot. It's actually looking a lot better on camera right now, but my face looks definitely too dark in real life. So like I said in the other check and I'll probably have to get the lightest shade, but I definitely want to purchase this one because I like how it looks throughout the day. I like how it held up pretty much everything except the shade I'm feeling. And this is without a powder too, which is crazy. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.